Hey everyone, welcome back to my show for an exclusive Halloween Egyptian Queen costume tutorial. Nice rhymes, huh? <laughs> now, since you know I love everything movies and television, this look was definitely character inspired. From one of my favorite, favorite movies in fact, The Mummy. The 1999 version starring my faves Brendan Fraser and Rachel Wise. Hence the background music from the movie soundtrack. I modeled this look from Anax and Moon's character because she was one of the baddest Egyptian ladies I had ever and still have ever seen on screen to this day. I wanted to take the sexy vibe of her look and blend together a mummy and Egyptian queen costume to cover all bases of representing the movie. And so the world would know that they buried the baddest queen of Egypt. I'm really excited to show you all this look, so without further ado, let's get into the video. Starting with the costume. For the mummy costume, you'll need a white short stretchy skirt. Cottony spandex material is preferred so you can squeeze into that baby later. Anywhere you can find one for a reasonable price definitely works. I got this one from Forever 21 sales rack for $5. Gotta save that money. You'll also need one king flat white sheet or two queens, white bandeau, a pencil, old tea bags over coffee water, scissors, a bucket, a large bucket, safety pins, and a ruler. You're going to start by measuring and drawing about two inch strips horizontally across your entire sheet. As you can see here, I did it vertically across the sheet, but it was a pain to have to keep going over the fold at the top, so I recommend measuring and cutting horizontally. Here's a close up of what I was doing. With the pencil and ruler, I kind of make dashes all the way down the sheet. Then I go in with my scissors. Make a small incision at the top and rip it apart. Sometimes I got a little off the mark while ripping, but I used my scissors to make small cuts to keep me on track. And at the end, take the piece you made, Toss it to the side and repeat. You want your strips to be stringy and frayed like a mummy's dressing, so don't worry if it kind of looks like they're falling apart. That's exactly what we're looking for. Eventually, you want your piles to go from this to this to this. After finishing the costume, I realized I really only used about three quarters of the sheet, so you don't have to finish the whole thing if you feel like you're not gonna need that many strips. And here's me finishing up my sheet. Once you're done, it's time to celebrate. Okay, that was weak. This is how you celebrate. But seriously though, don't do that or else you'll tangle it. <laughs> Instead, take the ends of your strips and tie them together. Pull from the long end so you'll have shorter tails. I recommend running your fingers along the strip like I'm doing here to make sure they're all facing the same way and so you won't have to worry about it later when you're wrapping it around your body. Also, don't tie them too tight because you might have to untie some of them later when we're dressing our bodies. Then, once they're all tied together, start with the end piece and carefully wrap it around your arm. Feel free to separate it into two bundles, which is actually something I didn't do here, but I highly recommend doing that too because it'll definitely help with the next part. Next, we're gonna soak them. Toss your used coffee water or old tea bags into your bucket. 
or new ones like I have here, whichever is most accessible. I took the tags off the tea bags because I didn't want the paper to get soggy and mix with the sheets. Then add hot water and add your strips. Let them soak for about two to three hours. Two to three hours later. When they're done, take them out by removing the tea bags first so you don't break them and accidentally mix in the herbs with the sheets. Then rinse and squeeze until the water being rinsed appears to be tea free. Hang them up and let them dry overnight. And there you have it, your mummy dressing. Feel free to celebrate again since we have officially finished part one. I apparently could not help myself. Oh, oh my gosh. All right, we're skipping this. Yes, thank you. Next, we're going to dress and style the costume, AKA the mummification process. Start by taking one of the loose ends of the tied strips and pin it to the skirt. Be sure to pin from underneath your skirt so the pin doesn't show. Then wrap and pin over and over until your skirt is hidden underneath your strips. Try to stretch your skirt a little bit with your legs before pinning just to make sure you have enough room to walk. <laughs> also, try and wrap it a little uneven since technically mummies have been buried for centuries and I'm sure their dressings got a little messed up over time. And this is exactly why the stretchy skirt comes in handy. <laughs> there you go. Another little celebration and we jump straight into the bandeau. That piece that was hanging on the side earlier, that's your placeholder. You'll need that to separate your skirt from your top. It'll come in handy when you need to use the restroom. But I started by wrapping it around my body, then up to the bandeau where I wrapped and pinned until the bandeau was hidden. And there you have it, your top and bottom. Here's a quick look. And a scare. <laughs> Next, we're going to wrap our arms and legs. I'll give you instructions on what I did, but feel free to do whatever you think looks best or feels most comfortable. Here, I basically started by bringing it up and over my shoulder, then wrapped it down my arm. The pieces on your arms and legs do tend to slide down, so I recommend looping them under each other as you wrap, such as I did here. I wrapped it around my hand a few times, then back up my arm. Tie it in place and repeat on your other arm. Oh, 
and I almost forgot. Don't pull too tight, you don't want to cut off your circulation and actually become a mummy from literally passing out during the night. Ugh, that would suck. For your legs, it's pretty much the same thing. Tuck a strip between your skirt and mummy dressing and wrap down and up your leg. Loop the strip through each other to avoid it from sliding down, then repeat on the other leg. Then you're done. Here's the top half and the bottom, arms, legs, and all. Take yourself for a victory lap or a mummy walk, whatever makes you feel good, because you killed it. And now, for the hardest part you've all been waiting for, makeup! <laughs> So basically, I wanted to recreate a Nux and a Moon's makeup look. Now, I'm no makeup guru, so feel free to make adjustments to whatever works best for your skin and your face, but here's the look. First, I started with my foundation. If you're not used to doing foundation first, that's understandable, but this look is really glammed with outside the line eyeliner, so I wanted to make sure my foundation was in place and I wouldn't have to redraw it later. I started with liquid foundation for cover up and finished with powder. Next, I did my contour. I kind of smudge it on lightly with my finger, super simple. For brows, I hit them with the Anastasia pomade, dark brown. I went a little darker than usual, definitely to add to the dramatic effect. Then I go in with my black Sephora brand eyeliner to my top and bottom lash lines. Then I go in with my Kat Von D liquid liner. And here's the tricky part. I started by making a straight line going from the corner of my eye to a little past the end of my eyebrow. Do that on both sides. <laughs> then for the crease line, I started at the end of the line I just made. I made a little marker at the top of my crease and met them in the middle. It definitely helped me stay on track when drawing this line. Next, I darkened my bottom outer lash line, and then I drew a line directly beneath the corner eye line. Here's what that all looks like. After, I went over it with my half-baked gold eyeshadow on my naked palette, all the way up to the brow and out to cover the eyeliner. Then I used a black gel liner and a small brush to go over my top and bottom outer lash lines. Just wanted to darken that up. Then I used my NYX matte liquid liner in black to trace over the designs I made earlier. This helped so much I wouldn't have to redo my gold eyeshadow over and over just in case I made any mistakes. After I go back to the gel liner to fill in my brows and make them even darker. This is definitely a queen look so everything has to pop and look chiseled. For my lips, I use my Red Mix Liquid Cream Lipstick and Red Liner Pear. And I just kind of add that on there. Yeah. 
Yes. <laughs> For an extra dramatic effect, I added some more of my half-baked gold shadow and just pat that right on top like so. And there you go. Yes, queen, let out your hair. So for hair, you can pretty much do whatever you want. There are wigs you can buy, etc. I decided to braid my natural hair. I felt like it was more appropriate and cute with me being an Egyptian queen, but that's the look. Go ahead and add some gold jewelry, some gold body glitter on your collarbone and shoulders like I did here. And you have finished an Egyptian queen makeup look modeled after a Nox and a Moon. Here's a close up of the finished makeup look from all angles. And here's the full body of your sexy mummy Egyptian queen costume for Halloween. Yes, queen, yes. It actually came out pretty good. I really hope you like it. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and stay tuned for more videos. My name is Asia, and this is Asia Spelled Backwards. Have a very happy Halloween, and be safe out there. Thanks for watching.